In this video, we'll analyze FDA's highly controversial aducanumab advisory committee meeting. Uh, as you can see here, the stock did a pretty strange thing. It jumped up in one day and it dropped the very next day, a uh, very large amount, all because of this advisory committee meeting. So in this meeting, they discussed the potential approval of Biogen's aducanumab, despite the drug having been declared failed by the company the year prior. So an advisory committee meeting, aka an adcom, is an expert panel convened by FDA to help them evaluate whether to approve a drug. FDA doesn't have to follow the recommendation of the panel, but they often do. So in this video, we're going to go through the FDA's analysis and the advisory committee meeting minutes. So the really interesting thing here is that all of this discussion uh, that the FDA has with this expert panel is public, and you can get a really interesting uh, behind the scenes look at what goes into actually approving a drug. So as we can see here, uh, there were a lot of, uh, a lot of controversy uh, associated with this adcom to say the least. So basically what happened is that Biogen's adcom seemed like it was gonna go well, and then it actually went really poorly, like very, very poorly. These are just some news headlines around the, so these are just some news headlines around the uh, FDA adcom. As you can see, FDA panel slams Biogen's controversial Alzheimer's med. Big thumbs down. F FDA reputation takes another hit after scathing aducanumab advisory panel meeting. These are all very negative headlines. Um, but it's actually even more interesting when you actually go beyond these headlines and press releases and see what was actually discussed at the advisory uh, at the adcom meeting. Um, so if just for a quick bit of context, you can either look at the previous YouTube videos in the series uh, or just a super high level overview here. So there were a lot of red flags concerning Biogen's decision to submit this drug for approval. Uh, like I said, they just dis dis disclosed that this study failed, that the phase three study of this drug failed and that uh, they were canceling the program. And then a few months later, they changed their mind due to some sort of sketchy post hoc statistical analyses. Um, so going into this adcom, there were a lot of questions around the study design, the conduct, the conduct of the study, the statistical analysis, and uh, investors were obviously very interested to see the result of this because it was designed as the first drug potentially to improve or uh, reduce the progression of Alzheimer's, um, which is a $5 million, $5 million patient population in the U.S. and potentially over a $100 billion market. So in the prior videos, we expressed some skepticism regarding Biogen's analysis. But what's more important is what the experts say and what FDA says. And we get to see all of that in a lot of detail through the ad advisory committee meeting uh, here. So again, an adcom is a public expert panel convened by FDA to help them review a drug. So for some drugs where the decision to approve the drug is not straightforward, like this one, FDA can convene an adcom. So it's a big meeting where the company seeking approval states their case, FDA presents their preliminary analysis, and then FDA presents a list of questions for the expert panel. So usually these questions are along the lines of, based on this study, is the drug safe? Or does this study support conclusion XYZ? Does the data as a whole demonstrate the drug is safe and effective? So then the expert panel discusses uh, the presented data in the context of these questions and then votes on the questions. Yes, this study supports that the drug is effective. No, this study does not support the fact that the drug is safe, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So the FDA doesn't have to follow the panel's recommendations, but they usually do. So the really interesting thing about these meetings is that in addition to all of the slides that were presented in the meeting, uh, being available online. Uh, the meeting was actually recorded. So you can see all the slides as they were presented, hear the presentation, and you can also hear the entire uh, discussion of each of the points in the ADCOM meeting. The minutes are also taken, so you can read basically every word that was discussed in the, the meeting. Uh, and then here in the, the webcast, you can also see the, the data presented as, as they go through it. Um, so we're going to go through this in, in more detail later and pick out some of the salient points, but just wanted to give a quick snapshot of what what was discussed here and uh, introduce some comments by one of the reviewers. Um, I'll note that uh, I was very disturbed by the some of the FDA's uh, interpretation of 301 by starting out with the assumption that the treatment works and now... So this is uh, Dr. Emerson. So Dr. Emerson is one of the members of the Peripheral and Central Nervous System Drugs Advisory Committee. Uh, he's a professor of biostatistics at the University of Washington. And uh, all of the other members, I think there's 11 members of the, uh, this advisory committee, they're all very experienced, very influential uh, key thought leaders in the field of uh, 
central nervous system and peripheral nervous system diseases, all either scientists or uh, physicians. Um, and just as a quick note here, when Dr. Emerson or other members of the panel are talking about the studies, um, so study 301 here is the ENGAGE study. So if you recall, this was the negative phase three study. Study 302, the EMERGE study was the positive phase three study. And study 103 was a, a phase 1B study, which just looked at uh, safety and tolerability. Uh, so back to the very disturbed uh, Dr. Emerson. Trying to say, why do we get null result, results in 301? Usually we start off saying the treatment doesn't work. And, and are these compatible with it? And I spoke to this earlier about if you assume the treatment doesn't work, then it's not that rare to have uh, some strong results on one of the trials and just completely nothing results. And that's happened to me uh, many times in my life when I've uh, monitored uh, um, trials at the same. And so, so basically what he's saying here, and this is a sentiment that is echoed countless times in this meeting, is that the FDA seems to be uh, taking the position that this drug is effective and then looking for evidence to support that rather than taking, assuming the null hypothesis, which is the drug doesn't work, and then looking for evidence to disprove that null hypothesis. So there's a lot of cherry picking of data that the panel is sort of accusing the FDA of. We'll get into that a lot more later, um, but there's one more uh, thing that Dr. Emerson is disturbed about. And lastly, uh, I was very, very, very disturbed by um, uh, some of the analyses that were considered. I was glad to hear Dr. Dunn um, soften what they were doing and, and try to make clear, but I will just state that, uh, you know, some 20 years ago, I was involved as an expert witness in a uh, scientific misconduct trial of, as it turns out, an Alzheimer's disease uh, researcher who was removing uh, data that uh, she didn't like and just seeing what happens. And, and that so again, this is a, a biostatistician at the University of Washington, and um, he is basically saying that he's very, very disturbed by some of these post-hoc analyses that FDA was considering. and. He stopped short of explicitly comparing this to scientific misconduct, but you know I think that he, he brought that he brought that up for a reason. So that was uh, just a, a little bit of a teaser and a sign of what's to come. Um, but before we go into more detail of what was actually discussed at the meeting, we need to discuss what happened before the meeting. So a few days before ADCOM meetings, FDA releases a breaching package. So this is a very detailed document that outlines basically FDA's analysis and their you know temporary conclusions that they're wanting feedback on from the adcom so this basically helps the public and reviewers understand the data that need to be discussed so the briefing package included a uh, 342 page pdf outlining the data to be discussed and it also includes the slides to be presented by biogen uh, which is a company seeking approval and fda so you can go to the website and you can take a look at uh, these pdfs um, again study 301 is engaged which is the negative phase three study. Study 302 refers to eMERGE, the positive phase three study. And then study 103 was, again, a phase 1B study that just was designed for safety and tolerability. So we just need to keep that in mind when we look at the rest of the data. So the briefing package was a little bit unusual in that it was jointly developed by FDA and Biogen. And the structure of this briefing package basically uh, had a bunch of different sections that laid out the applicant's position or laid out Biogen's position and then FDA commented on it. So this is an example here of the section where they're talking about study 302's efficacy. And basically Biogen says, study 302 is a robustly positive study and is a primary contributor to substantial evidence of effectiveness of aducanumab. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't surprise you that Biogen thinks this was a positive study. And the FDA says that we agree the results of study 302 are highly persuasive and the study is capable of providing the primary contribution to a demonstration of substantial evidence of effectiveness. So that wording is important and we'll get to it later, but we do, I just wanna show you the overall structure of this document, which is basically the applicant's position, then FDA, do they agree or disagree with that position? And the entire document is really laid out uh, with that structure. So if we look at the table of contents here, there's a number of different sections. So they discuss the background of the disease, um, the sort of history of uh, therapeutic research in the area, the amyloid beta hypothesis and how that has um, played out in clinical studies, 
They discuss the design of the studies that Biogen did, the futility analysis, and the uh, analysis around um, whether that was valid, and then a, a lot of the other details of the study. So in each of these sections, um, the FDA basically, or uh, Biogen starts out by saying their um, case, and then the FDA uh, ends the section by basically saying, okay, here is what we think about the what the applicant just said. So they go and do that for, again, every section. This is the Biogen's presentation of the data and conclusions, and then here's what the FDA uh, thinks about it. And then we have also an appendix, which is sort of the raw material of the FDA reviews. So uh, the clinical division in appendix one and the statistical division in appendix two did a detailed review of Biogen's data, and then the FDA working together with Biogen put together all of the rest of this uh, this briefing package. So this briefing package was sent out uh, and published on FDA's website before the adcom was done. And in short, FDA's conclusion was that the evidence supporting the effectiveness of aducanumab is highly persuasive. Uh, and that this uh, study 302, um, the effect of the high dose in this study was robust and exceptionally persuasive. So this is from the FDA's clinical review uh, in the appendix. But I just wanted to point this out because it sort of summarizes what the FDA and Biogen's conclusion was overall. The market uh, obviously liked that. The stock jumped a lot based on this uh, the briefing package coming out. And again, stock prices change when reality differs from expectations. And clearly, the market did not expect such a ringing endorsement from FDA. So back here, this is the futility analysis where Biogen said they're stopping development of aducanumab and Alzheimer's because the studies failed. This is where they said, oh, we reanalyzed the data. We changed our mind. We're going to submit this to FDA. Um, but the market was still a little bit skeptical, as you can see, it never fully recovered to these heights. Uh, but then when this briefing package came out, the stock jumped. And then the adcom happened. So uh, first we'll just go through like what actually happens at the adcom. So this is the agenda, this is available on their website. Basically uh, the FDA you know, gives some opening remarks, the applicant Biogen does a presentation with Q&A, FDA does a presentation with Q&A, and then there's a, an open public hearing. So this is basically where uh, patients and caregivers, uh, family members, patient advocates are given a chance to, to give their voice, um, especially for a tr disease like Alzheimer's where it's a devastating disease and there's no good treatments. It is really important for the panel to consider um, the level of unmet need and the, the patient experience here because that's why FDA has these expedited approval pathways in the first place. If there's a drug that has a chance of working and it seems safe enough, and there's patients who are really sick, then it, it makes sense to consider just getting these patients access earlier before you know the science is 100% there, as long as there's some reasonable promise that it will work. And then after this public hearing uh, is the discussion of the questions that are presented to the panel and then the votes on those questions. So the questions and the votes are the real meat of the meeting. That's what, the most important part. And here there are eight total questions. So half of them are discussion questions, basically where the panel is given a prompt or a specific topic to discuss. And then there are voting questions where uh, the panel is presented with questions phrased uh, in sort of a yes or no way. And uh, they vote on whether they think the answer is yes, no, or uncertain. So the discussion around this, these questions are um, where most of the meat of the meeting is. So this is, we're just gonna jump to the, the, the results here. These are the, the way that the panel voted on the voting questions. So we'll just go through them here. So does study 302, the positive study, the eMERGE study, does this study viewed independently and without regard for study 301 provide strong evidence that supports the effectiveness of aducanumab for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease? So the wording is really important here for all these questions, but basically what this is saying is if you take the positive eMERGE study, does that support the effectiveness of aducanumab? So you'd think maybe yes, but the panel voted overwhelmingly no uh, to this question, and we'll get into why. The next question, the voting question, does study 103, so this again was a phase 1b study, does this phase 1b study, study 103, provide supportive evidence of the effectiveness of aducanumab for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease? No yes votes, seven no votes, four uncertain votes. Um, again, this is discordant with FDA's briefing package, which says that it's highly persuasive evidence um, for study 302 and overall. The next voting question, has the applicant presented strong evidence of a pharmacodynamic effect on Alzheimer's disease pathology? Five yes, no 
uh, zero no votes and six uncertain. And then the last question, in light of the understanding provided by the exploratory and read post hoc analyses of study 301 and 302, along with the results of study 103 and the evidence of a pharmacodynamic effect on Alzheimer's disease and pathophysiology, is it reasonable to consider study 302 as primary evidence of effectiveness of aducanumab for treatment of Alzheimer's disease? Uh, no yes votes, 10 no votes, and one uncertain vote. So that may, this stuff may not make total sense right now. Um, we'll go through it in detail. The wording is super important, and if the wording is confusing, there may be an intention for that, which we'll get into. But basically, the takeaway here is that the panel was overwhelmingly against this drug for Alzheimer's, which is completely um, in opposition to FDA's stance and obviously to Biogen's stance. And the questions that were asked, right, the specific four voting questions that were chosen were also very concerning to the panel. So we'll get into why these questions were controversial in the next video, where we'll just discuss the overall process of the adcom and how FDA can use that to kind of drive the panel towards a certain conclusion. And then we'll probably do another video after that that actually gets into breaking down the uh, discussion of the adcom in detail. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of material, but it's all really interesting and I think important to understand um, if you're interested in learning how drugs get approved. Uh, so I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I uh, will see you in the next one.